Do 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 do. I eat games. Yeah. I was really impressed with the first hour of the game I played back in February, cool. and a lot of the the systems and the way they interact and the aesthetic and the feel of the game was good. And one of my concerns playing through that first hour was: Is this game? Bioshock or Dishonored or what is it? Is it trying to mimic a certain feel? And playing through the second hour of this, it definitely feels like it has its own identity as far as aesthetic, aesthetic and the systems coming together. Do you feel like you guys found that sort of prey feel early on or is that something that recently came together? Uh, you know, I think at first we knew what experience we wanted we did not want we, did, we didn't know the details about it we did not know exactly how it was going to look or uh what the um, the tools and the you know the powers would be and what the enemies exactly would be like so so i would say yes for the overall experience we had a very very precise um idea in mind of you know something that uh where you felt like you had to survive and, and, and there's the loneliness and there's the, the, there's the heavy mood, etc. We knew that, uh, but, you know, the looks and, and all those, those came later as we tried things. One of my, one of my favorite games is Metroid Prime, okay. the first one. And in that game, um, you've played it? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Okay, so there is a sense of, in all the Metroid games, but partic- particularly in Prime 1, where you feel alone... And it has scanning. That is two big things that this game has. And it's interesting because there is scanning in some other games where you kind of press a button and you're you're seeing things in a different vision. Scanning is sort of, it flickers up some information, but you're actually focusing in on a creature and scanning and you have a reticle and it sort of fills up a gauge. But also in scan mode, your vision is restricted, but you can walk around and still fire a weapon. So it is different than than Prime, where you can kind of interact and fire and stuff like that. From the outset, did you guys want the the scanning to be where you couldn't move, you couldn't do anything? Like, did you? It it seems like it's something you guys really played with. Yeah, yeah. We tried different we had different models for it, but I think the the desire to make it that it's restrict your vision is so that people don't stay in that mode forever, right? Because uh, I think everybody has. Every department have their fears, unlike the the art, the art uh, lead. Uh, the, his worst fear would be that now the game is entirely blue or something. So yeah, yeah, it's funny. I was actually thinking about that because um, Batman Arkham Asylum is notorious for just everybody was always in bat vision because yeah, it's because it's valuable. It, it's so valuable, yeah, yeah. but you don't see how beautiful the game is, like you right. were saying. And I was thinking about that about you guys made it so that I didn't want to be in it all you the time. Stay there, I right? don't want to stay there, yeah. but I need to be yeah. in order to. To, to scan and stuff like that, but I but I am curious about scanning with the mimics because one of the things in the first hour we played we didn't have access to the psychoscope. So one of the things I love about the mimics is you you just don't know where they're going to be. When I um, talked to someone on the team, they said we don't script where the mimics are we just sort of say okay there's going to be two mimics in this room and they will randomly choose where they're going to be so you guys don't even know yes, which one they're yeah. going to be which is awesome so the tension is i mean it's always tense right but when you get the psychoscope now that we can scan for them that tension is reduced a little bit so I'm you can only scan for them uh well once they are when there are objects you still can't see them uh, except, man, maybe that's what happened to you uh, if you have a chipset uh, that reveals okay. the mimics. Um, but that's, um, I don't know if you've seen the chipset system. It's like, uh, I did. yeah. yeah it so, and they're, those are randomized, so it's possible that you found one or something. Maybe. Okay. But I mean, once you actually encounter them, there's a little cursor over them that shows right. where they are. Oh, I see what you mean. You like, yeah, you mark them. You, you mark them. Is that after you scan them? That the, yeah, you mark them as you. Uh, it's part of the scanning system, yeah. So okay. you can mark anything, yeah. But you have to use the. Yeah, but you have to use the. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, um, I'm interested about the survival thing because um, earlier you said you wanted a game to where you feel like you're surviving, and 
it's obviously a tense environment to exist in. How deep did you guys go with exploring survival systems? Like, was it was there ever thirst and hunger with like Fallout Four with their whole survival yeah. thing? Did you guys actually go in that direction? We did actually. Uh, we had to back. Uh, back out of some of those we have to backtrack from some of those because they were uh, you know we had uh, some a lot of hardcore systems like weapon degradations and um, uh, trauma mm. where uh, you know if you jump from too high you would break your bone or something and then now you would be limping for a while until you find a medical bay it's a, and it's kind of it could be really really fun yeah. because now it's not an. It's not the story of the game anymore. It's your story suddenly. So it's now. It's like the most important thing to you is to find a medical bay, yeah. and uh, so now there's this like you know kind of like made up side quest that is so important to you, and you're lost and far away from any medical bay, so you don't know how you're gonna get there. Uh, but it was. Uh, we have so many systems in that game, and that's kind of like the way we work. You know, we, we dump systems in the in the game, and we let them live for a while and see what what happens. And at some point, it was just overwhelming. There was too many things. For the player to think of and do and and uh, and forget about uh, that we we took them away. Now we we're thinking of re-enabling them in some update later. Uh, once the you know once the people have played the game and they might want to replay it in super hard mode and now they also can break a bone or or uh, have a concussion or anything that we used to have. Yeah. Um. So with the game, and it sounds like you guys have spent a, a considerable amount of time testing systems and, and different things and play styles. Um, what has been the most difficult part of creating Prey? Yeah, I would say probably, uh, probably two things that come to mind. Um, one is the structure itself being kind of an open world, really, uh, and persistent. You can always come back everywhere, um, and there's so much to scavenge, so much stuff to find, and, and side side content that it's a, it's a it's a challenge on its own. Uh, how do you tune a game like that? How do you make it? Uh, and we have so many tools on top of that that your experience is going to be very different than somebody else's experience. So we have a little bit of the Fallout problem, where. If you really take an archetype and you push it your way, and you, you go, you go, you know, you make some some sort of a character that is all about wrenching or whatever, uh, and you keep investing in that, and 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 you combine it with some other skill that might make it even stronger or something, then you, you, there's a risk that you break the game, right? And so I would say that combined with the open part of it is what leads to uh, difficulty of tuning. So it's been a long, long uh, process of uh, you know just the empiric method, having people play and complain about this or say that this is too easy about that. And we would read metrics. We would have we did actually a very, very in-depth um, system which would record everything that the player does from top down on a, on a 2D map. And so it's, it was really cool. We could and then you so you make a, a, mo a movie of that, a video. And you could play it times four, and you would see like you would see the, the all his little position and what he has his inventory, what he killed, what he, you know. So that was one way to approach the the tuning. And the second thing I would say that was hard in our case was probably coming up with aliens that we were satisfied with because it's um, we knew from the get go that we wanted to come up with aliens that were not really done before, something that was not necessarily the uh, the classics that everybody sees, right. you know, yeah. and uh, so that's why we went with paranormal, ghostly, semi-material. We're not sure they have their own psionic approach, whatever. Uh, and so that uh, that took a while to find like how they, what they do, and also how they look and how they move. Uh, so, the, so those were challenges. But I guess you know, if you ask somebody else, they're gonna find some other challenges. I don't have, I don't have in my mind right now. Sure. Okay, last two questions, um, and personal for you. Um, first is, what is your favorite way to play the game? Like, what skill and powers do you enjoy? Uh, there's a power that I, I, I don't know if it was uh, review. I don't know if it was available in the demo. It's, uh, it's called Shift that I really like, where you can uh, you can leave a, a clone behind you and 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 shift in a direction it's almost like warping in dishonored but leaving something behind right it's a little bit almost like that okay but the difference is that you can go you can read backward forward uh sideways as well uh so it's um so it's uh, you know it's a it's an interesting power i really love this one uh i like as well to just usually i like to 
play more like uh, you know take advantage of this of the stealth. Uh, even though our game is not about stealth, and, and we support it at, at to some level, you know, like more like in a Fallout. It's not like in a Dishonored. No. Uh, but having uh, all the, you know, if you maximize, if you max out all the stealth stuff and the range stuff, you can actually have a really strong advantage on, on the first attack when you surprise the enemies. So I, I kind of like that. Cool. Okay. Um, and last. <coughs> I know there's still a lot of work to do with um, with prey, you know, support and stuff afterwards. But where do you where do you want to go creatively um, after doing this sort of epic sci-fi story? And then there's like Dishonored. Um, what creatively, where do you feel like you want to go after this game? Uh, I want to stay in that kind of games, no matter what. You know, the first person. Um FPS RPG, say let's say it's you know, genre. <laughs> uh, it's a genre that yeah, it's a genre that we we've been specialized in and we like. Uh, I th- I think the new tendency for us will be to explore a uh, more dynamic type of storytelling. Uh, you know, less of less of a made pre-made plot, but more of a, uh, things that are. Uh, driven by the player's actions, and and so you know, the more the more somehow the more. Um, uh, procedural can be a storytelling. I think the I think the more it belongs to the player, and uh, how to do that exactly, I think it's something that a lot of designers right now are thinking of. And yeah. We're not the only ones here, uh, and it's probably the next direction for our genre anyway. You know, for the immersive sims, I think it's it's probably where it, where to go. It kind of goes hand in hand with the kind of gameplay, you know. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, with a yeah. Lot of different systems. Yeah, stuff. because we we are we are good at doing consequences like a simulation of based on you know sensing what the player does and therefore like you know, physics and all that yes and, and and interesting systems that cohabitate but but the the story consequences is are more like things that are pre-written and and you know and we use the one that based on what the player has triggered but but ideally if we could find things like the nemesis system or whatever that that is uh like i'm talking about shadow of motor in this case where where you know things are more like a consequence of truly you know the st- you know you suddenly you find your own story um your your enemy is like now tailored to your uh, to your experience uh, to to what you did, and it becomes very very personal. Uh, and I think that is very very powerful.